In this viscast, we're told a horseshoe has a surface area of 50 square centimetres and a blacksmith heats uh, this horseshoe to a red hot 810 degrees Celsius. What rate does uh, the horseshoe radiate energy? And so this is really a question about one of our heat transfer mechanisms, uh, the one of radiation. And we know that uh, the power which is radiated is given by the Stefan Boltzmann uh, radiated power law. So the power is given by the emissivity E times the Stefan Boltzmann uh, constant sigma times the area of the object multiplied by the temperature of that object to the power 4. If we recall what the Stefan Boltzmann constant is, uh, 5.67 by 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the power of 4, that gives us a hint that our temperature really should be uh, given in Kelvin, which is different to what we have here in degree. So to develop this, basically I've got my horseshoe, if you want to think of it as a physical picture, it's going to be radiating in all these directions. The amount of radiation depends upon the area of the object and the temperature. Now we're told the temperature and we're told the area and we know what this constant sigma is. What about the emissivity E? Okay, what's that? We're not given that as a value. We can make a fairly good stab at what we think the value should be. Essentially, if I've got a good absorber, uh, which is also means it's a good emitter, then E can have the value of 1. Okay, that's our perfect uh, black body emitter. Um, if my object was really shiny, a perfect mirror, which means it wouldn't absorb or emit anything, then E would be equal to 0. So it's just a unitless parameter between 0 and 1. Probably standard practice to choose uh, that E is going to be equal to 1 here. One other thing to point out is that this power here, which is emitted given by this expression here, is not necessarily the net power uh, which is emitted, because the net power which is emitted will be the power emitted minus the power which is absorbed. The absorbed radiative power is given by the same expression here, except the temperature we care about is the temperature of the surrounding environment. So we'll recall that the net radiated power is given by E times sigma times A times the temperature of the object to the power 4 minus the temperature of the ambient, the surrounding temperature to the power 4. Now I should say that this expression here is important when the temperature of the object is close to the temperature of the ambient. But as you can see, if the temperature of the object is larger than the temperature of the ambient, because we've got powers of 4 here, that second term will actually be really small. In fact, let's just compare that here. If I had 810 degrees Celsius and we want to convert that to, uh, to Kelvin, remember we take our temperature in Celsius and then we uh, add on um, 273. So 0 degrees Celsius is 273 degrees Kelvin minus 273 degrees Celsius is 0 degrees Kelvin. So let's have a look at what would be 1083, which is the temperature of my horseshoe to the power of 4. And let's compare that with my ambient temperature. Let's say it's room temperature, which is around about 300 Kelvin. 300 to the power of 4. So we've got 1.3756 by 10 to the 12. And we've got 8.1 by 10 to the power 9. So in fact this 8 only occurs, this is my 12th, 11th, 10th, 8th, 9th. It's like adding 8 in this column here. So you can see that that second term is really not going to be important in this particular problem. So in fact we can ignore it because it's so small. So that allows me to calculate the net power which is radiated. My E was 1. I've got my Stefan Boltzmann constant 5.67 by 10 to the minus 8. 
multiplied by my area. Now note my area is in 50 centimeters squared. Stefan Boltzmann's constant is in meters squared. So how do I convert 50 centimeters squared to meters squared? We might just do that. So 50 centimeters squared is going to be equal to what number to turn 50 centimeters squared to meters squared? So I want it to end in meters squared. I have to divide by centimeters squared. So how many meters squared is there per centimeter squared? Well, certainly know that there's one meter per 100 centimeters. That means there's one meter squared per 100 squared centimeters. Or I can take that 50 and multiply by 100 squared is 10,000 or 10 to the 4 on the denominator which is like dividing by 10 to the 4 so multiplying by 10 to the minus 4 meters squared is 0 0.005 meters squared which kind of makes sense a meter squared is a large area so 50 centimeters squared is certainly going to be um, a small fraction of a meter squared okay so we've got that um, that area in meters squared now, so I might write that as 5 by 10 to the minus 3 meters squared, and then we multiply that by t to the power 4, you know what that is, that's uh, 1.37 by 10 to the 12. So finally, let's just go through and multiply these things together. So I've got 5.67 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 1.37 gives me 38.8 and then multiply that by 10 to the power and then why I add these numbers together so I've got minus 8 plus minus 3 so minus 11 here plus 12 is going to be equal to 1 so I've got 38.8 by 10 to the 1 which is the same as 388 and that would be watts of power which is being radiated by my horseshoe.